I was going to pass on this video and not make it, but I think it's important to talk about the things I can't do, for which there are many, as much as it is important to talk about the things I can do. So this video is about my first win attempt on Zwift. Okay, I'm going to pass out. I've been trying to win my first Zwift race and I can't do it, to put it frankly. I currently keep hitting the same hurdle that I can't overcome. This video is a break from my normal, overtly positive and overconfident approach to my fitness goals. One of my superpowers, and it is a superpower, is my overconfidence in my own personal ability. It's the reason I'm able to keep moving forward without quitting because I genuinely believe that, with a lot of hard work, I can achieve the thing that I'm trying to achieve, whatever that thing is. The thing in the context of this video is a win on Zwift, but I don't know where that first win is gonna come from. Okay, so today's video is the start of my attempts at coming in first. So my attempt at winning a Zwift race, not coming on the podium, coming in first place. That's today's challenge. This has been something that's been on my mind for a while since I've placed on the podium several weeks back now. Um, where I came in third place. I then go for a sprint finish, but I'm completely done. I have nothing. The guy I'm racing has in excess of six watts per kg. Last week, I filmed a video about my personal achievements in 2023. I don't have any major races planned for December, so I'm making this video now as a roundup and celebration of the things I have achieved this year. And in all transparency, I also filmed recent Zwift races in the now apparent vain hope of having a cheeky Zwift win so I could include that as part of my 2023 roundup video. I obviously didn't achieve it. I didn't make any reference to it and decided to ignore the fact that the only thing missing from my 2023 goals was a win on Zwift. It didn't go unnoticed by some of you either. I uploaded the video last Friday and received a load of brilliantly positive comments on the back of it, which I really appreciate. But the fact that a Zwift win was missing was really annoying me. So the race I'm going to be racing is the Neoko Nights Twilight course. Um, I've raced this route I think twice before so I don't know it that well but I know it well enough to know that there are a couple of small inclines, nothing major. I did have a weight drop. I dropped down to just over 102 kg so I'm really hoping that's going to make a huge difference. So let's do this. Let's get on the bike and let's go. I'm making this video as acknowledgement that this target is currently beyond me. I've now raced 35 races since starting Zwift Racing for the first time back in May of this year. In all 35 races, every single one I have finished with this overwhelming feeling that winning was far beyond me. That one step too far, which you expect when you first start Zwifting. You don't expect to win races. If I did start winning races early in my Zwift time, then I probably would have given up because it would have been you know, disproportionate to how hard everything else I try and do is. I've just realized that the event has assigned a bike and it's the Z1 concept bike or the Tron bike. This is the first time I've ever been in a race where they have chosen a bike for you. I'm assuming you get the stats for the Tron bike. It's not just it in appearance, it's not just the skin, but I don't know. I didn't research this, I just jumped on the first race that looked good. Zero watts and go. It's my own fault that I've made the start of this race fast. My own fault. Right, let's keep going. We're not, we've just gone through. We're out of the, oh, I'm tired. A small group has formed at the front and we've got some people trying to catch us. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the first lap. We're sat relatively okay at the back of this pack. Occasionally there's a small surge, but we're okay. So I've just pulled the group up to the two leads. Okay, this is the start of the second lap. We're doing all right. I'm trying to pull the group. There's a guy that's moved on. He's pushed forward a bit. He's gone. 
annoyingly. This is something that is really hard to judge. I've been caught out by riders who shoot off really early in the race before. So early and with such power that I'm convinced that they're racing below their actual category. And if I attempt to stick with them, I'll just burn out. Only to then later find that they were cat D and did win the race, which is really annoying. This is where racecraft and experience plays a part that I need to get a lot better at. Here's the thing, if I go for it, chase him down, everyone comes with me, I've burnt all my matches, he's well gone. That's annoying that he's managed to do that. Just a full on breakaway. 13 seconds ahead now. Oh, tough. Impressive if he's D. I'm starting to grind because I'm tired. I'm starting to get dropped now. Third and final lap. Right, I've been dropped. I'm now in the chasing group. I'm struggling big time. Okay, we need there. I'm done. I've got no sprint in me. I'm broken. How the hell am I going to win one of these races? Oh my God. How the hell indeed. Really hard to see my way through when it looks and feels this hard. I'm nowhere near my best on those stats. My FTP and best five second, one minute, five minutes and 20 minutes were set in October on the back of my podium position race and I haven't been able to replicate them since. I suppose this answers my question of how the hell I'm going to win a race. Probably replicate these numbers again. Get back to my former best. You see, the problem I'm facing is that there's always at least one person who can out sprint me. And to be honest, there's a, normally a lot more than one. I do not have a sprint in me. And that's assuming I reach the end of the race with at least one other person and we're fighting for first and second. I do not know where my first Zwift win is going to come from, as I don't think I can out sprint that last person. Again, assuming I stick with them for the whole race. What does give me a huge confidence boost is that I now have progressed enough in Cat D to a point where, in most instances, it's now become very uncommon for me to get dropped by the lead pack. It's not a guarantee, and I have to give everything I have, but I can now keep up with the good riders in Cat D, and I'm able to put myself in a very good position to fight for a win. So if I'm able to get to the end of the race with the leaders, why would I not have an aspiration to win? It just makes sense. I was going to pass on this video and not make it, but I think it's important to talk about the things I can't do, for which there are many, as much as it is important to talk about the things I can do. A lot has to be said about starting a race with a positive goal. Aim for the stars and maybe I'll hit the moon. I've spent all of my previous races with one goal, to not get dropped. This is no longer an issue, unless I have an off moment. Last week, I started a race for the first time with the direct target of a Zwift win. I've never said that before. I've never started a race saying I want to win this race. I've always started it saying don't get dropped. This is new. So this is the day after. So this is race number two now. I am um, still in the process of trying to win a race. So yeah, we're going to do the same call, same race. I've literally got four minutes. I haven't forgotten my towel today, which is unlike me, but I have forgotten my water. Luckily, it's only a half hour ride. So we've got a five minute warm up actually. So Operation Zwift winner race number two, I chose the same course and race again as I now knew the course and wanted to take advantage of some actual knowledge. Right, let's go. Tactic off the line again is to set a fast pace and hopefully drop as many stragglers as possible. I'd rather be fast off the line and then let the pack catch me than be too slow and get dropped early. I set the pace at the beginning of this race, which didn't really slow for the whole race. This lead pack formed around me and we dropped everyone else except for the 11 of us pushing at the front. I just want to stay with this front group. Someone's going for it at the front. Okay, so it's all strung out at the moment. 
someone else had the same idea and was pushing hard off the front, causing the lead out to become really strung out. And then really quickly, a small lead group formed about four seconds ahead of me that I either needed to try and catch or my race again was over this time before it even started. Out of the two Lone Rangers up front, we eventually catch the chaser, but the other guy doesn't just hold this position, he grows it. I genuinely do not know how to combat this and it's not the first time I've seen someone shoot off from the start line and maintain or even increase their lone lead. It, he also appears on Zwift Power, which I was genuinely surprised by. My question to anyone racing like this, if you can leave a start line of a 20 plus K race and not only maintain your lead but also grow it, then why don't you race in the category above? Why are you racing me and other riders like me who can't keep up with you? When the day comes that I'm able to convincingly win like this, I will always race better riders. Otherwise, there's no glory in the win for me and I'll never grow as a rider, which is ultimately why I'm putting myself through this. So, there's a guy off, right off the front, 12 seconds ahead of us, which is mental. I'm not quite sure how he's able to do that. Okay, there's two up front now. Uh, 11, 12 seconds ahead, mental. We're just finishing the first lap. That guy that sped off at the start, he's now 31 seconds ahead. Uh, someone did try and make an attempt to catch, but then we've caught the second person. I think they gave up. We're coming up to the end of the, of the second lap. Hang on, let me turn the fan off. That end Campbell is Nearly 50 seconds ahead, so we're not catching him. Last lap, let's do this. Okay, the pace has picked up big time. These guys are pushing hard. See if they can't drop people. I'm very reluctant to let them drop me. Right, this is why I got dropped yesterday. They're starting to push. So the small group behind us have just bridged up to us. Okay, I'm getting dropped. I am struggling, guys, struggling. Ah, come on. 400 meters, 300. I then finished my second attempt at this race in eighth on Zwift and six on Zwift Power. I get some confidence from this performance, especially the slightly better sprint at the end. So on to my next attempt at a win. So third time lucky. This is day three on the same course on the Nyoko um, Twilight Harbour course. And uh, same course, same race, same bike, everything's all the same. This is the third attempt at trying to come first in a race. I've got gradually better over the last two days. So today we're gonna to go again. I'm gonna keep doing this until I win a race, come first, which may be some time. I've forgotten my towel, so I need to go out in the cold. I've got less than 10 minutes until the race starts. So I'm gonna go and get my towel and be back. And then go. My intention on the start line, as always, is to force a faster than is comfortable start. So those that were napping are dropped really early. It means that I have to compete with less people, which gives me a slightly better fighting chance. Forces a fast start, and hopefully, like this guy's going, look. It just forces a really fast start, which means that we don't end up as one big group, because there aren't any hills on this course to drop people. I have very recently discovered that on short, low heels or rollers, that they can be actually quite helpful. I'm not too bad on them. If I use them and power into them, I can catch or even pass those that drop a gear or slow for the climb. 
any more than a roller and I'm destroyed though. So I just need to put that out there. I start to use this tactic on future races. <sighs> and now I'm being bloody dropped. I'm constantly fighting being dropped in this race. This course is really fast and I'm struggling to keep up with the leaders. There are two or three really powerful riders that keep pulling as soon as the pace drops. Okay, that's backfired. Jumper's coming off. We've been dropped already. A lead pack. Well, we're not a lead pack because there's two off the front. It looks like we're about to catch the leaders. They're only a second ahead now, which is good. They didn't make the breakaway stick, which is good. I'm gonna use my arrow to catch. Okay, hand been dropped. Right, we're just coming up to the end of the first lap. Uh, we're doing all right. I've just used my draft boost just to just give me a bit of respite. It's a fast pace and. These guys aren't letting off. There's a guy off front that he's trying really hard to break away, bless him. And uh, yeah, I'm doing everything I can just to stay in this group. So weirdly enough, I was just starting to get dropped then, but the hill came, came in to save me. I'm able to catch up on the hills, strangely, which is a phrase I never thought I'd use. Ah, we've come together nicely here. It'd be amazing if we could stay like this. Oh my God. All right, last lap. Okay, a guy's gone off the head. Oh, I can't chase him down. There's another hill. Come on. Come on, Ryan. No pain. There's a lot of pain. Getting dropped. I'm back in. No pain. A thousand meters. Come on. I'm in a good position here. There is a lone ranger off the front who's managed to make their breakaway stick, but I don't want to give up. And then I make a serious schoolboy error. I allow myself to lose the wheels of those off the back and I have to fight really hard to catch up with the lead group. I used all my remaining energy I may have had for the sprint finish in trying not to be dropped in the last kilometre. I wasn't very efficient and lost the right to attack because of it. I haven't got it. My legs were jelly then. When I did stand to sprint, my legs went completely. They were jelly. I haven't got it. I'm embarrassed. Oh, oh my God. I didn't have it. Oh, I can't believe that. I balls it up at the end there. Oh, I can't speak. I finished in 19th on Zwift and 13th on Zwift Power. Being dropped twice in the last kilometre and having to play catch up cost me vital positions. Anyway, on to the next race as we continue Operation Win a Race on Zwift. I have lost some weight, so I now weigh, I don't know if you can see that, let that focus. So I now weigh 101.4 kg. Okay, clip in. I am late. So I've got on the bike with about a minute to go. I'm late getting on this. We're riding the Zwift Crit Racing Club. Today's a Sunday, very wet, rainy Sunday, and we're gonna go for it on this ride. There is 42 people. Let's give everyone a thumbs up. <sighs> OK. 
Okay. So today's attempt is a win. Simple as that. Watching back on this race, I have a lethargic start, disappointed with this one. Someone else starts pushing the pace and I now have to play catch up. Goes against all my rules for Zwift racing. Then a small lead group of only 15 riders formed very early. And with everyone else left floundering around over 10 seconds behind with no real way of catching unless they push really hard. Then my heart rate monitor decided to start playing up. I think the battery was low. I didn't need it other than for Zwift power as I knew my heart rate was stratospheric. It does come back on later on in the race, so my Zwift power results are saved. Right, we're in the lead group. Heart rate monitor's not working for whatever reason. Because I tell you now, my heart rate is not 80 BPM. So that was a fast start. It goes to show how fast this was. So there's probably, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, approximately, in this lead group. And we have dropped everyone else. There's 46 riders in this race, and only the 15 that sprinted off that start line, oh crap, getting dropped. Having almost been dropped because I was talking to camera, I then took my eye off the ball and I realized someone had pushed very early for a breakaway and they were now three seconds ahead of this lead pack. As a group, we kept pushing forward and eventually sucked that Lone Ranger back into the pack. And again, if I'd have reacted at this point and chased him, I would have burnt valuable energy. Two guys that were going for a sprint jersey on that line, they've gone ahead. They're probably about two seconds ahead. I need to learn when to try to close a breakaway down and when to stick with the lead group, hoping that the lead group catches them on its own. It's like a game of blackjack, when to stick, when to twist. I have an engine, I'm good at endurance. I don't have a sprint, so I need to probably force more splits in the body of the race rather than wait for a sprint finish. But that tactic feels like one for a future me. Okay. We're coming up to that hill. Uh, I think, I think we are. We're on the third lap. We're coming up to the scary hill. This is where not knowing the course and not knowing where the climbs are or where to effectively deploy the power-ups are a huge disadvantage for me. Let's hit it. So I hit the feather in completely the wrong place. I used it too early. My aim was to use the feather at the start of the small incline and then power into the climb, giving me a fighting chance to stick with the lead pack. Yeah, I need to hit it now. What a moron. And because I'm such a moron, I start to move towards the back of the group as the Absolutely inevitably moron. lighter riders pass me. I know this is where few, maybe one or two of these riders will make their break in the final lap. <sighs> If I was a lot lighter and didn't want to fight in a sprint, this is where I would also push for a breakaway in the final lap as well. Everything about racing in Zwift, especially in Cat D, is all about efficient riding. I need to put myself in positions that give me the best chance of success without spending more energy than I absolutely need to to achieve the goal I want to achieve. For example, I currently do not have a sprint finish in me. That's something I need to work on. But for now, I need to focus on my strengths. And that's my endurance and consistent power. I need to stay with the lead group without having to constantly play catch up. This means not burning through my reserves for silly mistakes like this. That mistake has probably cost me the race. Because I've burnt too many matches there. What a moron. I'm still with the group as we approach that hill again. I mean, it's hardly a hill, but it takes everything I have to get up here. I need to be at the front to go up the hill. I need a feather. I need a feather. Oh, yes. Come on. Last lap. We've got this straight. And then we've got the bend, and then we've got the incline. But I have a feather. 
and this time I won't mess it up. Now, this rider shoots past me on this last incline. He doesn't appear on Zwift Power, so I can't compare my stats with his, but he absolutely blows everyone away now. I was right when I said a few were waiting for their opportunity on this section. It's a good place for a last minute breakaway. Now, from a racecraft perspective, I knew this is exactly where I wanted to go. This position was perfect for a springboard sprint into the pack with only 200 meters left but I had nothing in reserve. The messages from my brain were hyped and positive, but my legs were not listening. They were jelly again. They, they just didn't work. And then one of the riders now dropping 9.1 watts per kg. That's crazy sprinting ability. Ah! 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 Okay, I'm gonna pass out. Ah! Ah! So as I lie on the floor, trying my best not to black out, I crossed the line in 13th on Zwift and 9th on Zwift Power. The effort it took me to reach 9th on Zwift Power felt very disproportionate. However, I'm not yet done. As I make this video, I wanted to try it one last time before this video goes live. I filmed this yesterday. I was desperate for a win during December and decided to go for a route I've raced before the Glasgow Crit Circuit. I'm just putting my shoes on. And today's race, hang on, let me just do this, because I need to get on the bike. I'm late again. I'm going after my first win. Yeah, so today's race, I'm gonna be doing something new. Uh, I've had a few races recently, three or four races in the last week, where I've raced on routes that I've never raced on before. And obviously not knowing the route is a disadvantage, not knowing where to push. And being a heavier rider, hills are a blessing and a curse. So they're a curse because obviously as a heavy rider, I'm at a disadvantage. However, I am quite powerful. So where there are rollers or where there's a short hill that then levels out or even goes back downhill, I have an advantage because I can power into it quite hard. And that gives me a really good boost up the, up the climb. Where that doesn't work is where that hill goes on for probably longer than 200 meters. That's where the lighter riders have the obvious huge advantage. So I have decided today I'm gonna race the Glasgow Crit circuit. There's a crit race that starts very shortly. I saw it last night. So I've gone for the Glasgow Crit for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because I like crit racing. Crit racing seems to be where I have the most success. And obviously because of success, I like it. Um, it's fast, but it also has a hill climb. Now that might be counterintuitive to what I've said before about being really heavy. I'm 101 kg. And doing a hill climb at 101 kg is a disadvantage. However, it's not a big one. And if I time it right, I can use that climb to my advantage and hopefully drop my opponent. Now the other thing, I mentioned warm up, my other disadvantage as well as being heavy, is I have next to no sprint. I've, this year I made videos about not getting dropped in Zwift. I'd like to say without jinxing it, is that I'm now past the point of being dropped in Zwift races. Got enough confidence, and probably most importantly, I've dropped enough weight that means I am competitive. So I'm able to stick with the front riders. Occasionally there's the odd um, superhuman D cat rider that zooms off, but as a whole, I'm able to stick with the lead pack. I don't get dropped very easily. I should quickly say before we start this race that the bike frame I've been racing on is the Canyon Abroad 2021 with the DT Swiss wheels. Let's go. The worst thing you can do in any Zwift race is to get dropped on the line. There's no excuse for that. I'm talking from personal experience. I now even have the endurance to be able to set the pace at the start of the race and force many other riders to be the ones getting dropped, which is where I was not too long ago. <sighs> okay, good start. We've managed to get 
a small lead of three seconds from the group behind. And we have a feather. So we're coming up to the Clyde kicker for the first time. At this point, I need to say that I completely balls this climb up. My strategy was to use this climb as a boost to push on, however, not on lap one. And I didn't expect the others to do the same as what I had planned, especially not on the first lap. So whilst I relax into the pace, the others push on and I get dropped. Okay, so that's the first roller. And then, we go into it here. So this rider ahead of me now is a hard one to work out. He's now dropping nearly five watts per kg up this kicker and he uses it to push off away from the rest of the group, dropping me and others around me. He goes for a full on breakaway on lap one. He does end up on Zwift Power after the race, but I can't work out his stats. He's raced in 13 races this year, four were in Cat C and the rest were in Cat D. And he hasn't raced since March, then one race in September and then one in December. So he's obviously had an awesome summer on the roads and he's now a very good Cat D rider knocking on the door of Cat C. I put the fan on, I need to get, we need to catch that group. I'll say now, hopefully without spoiling the end, that he absolutely destroys this first lap. I will also say that I do not know why I didn't use my feather power up. This was a mistake and one that really cost me. Ah! Ah! I've been dropped from the league group. All those ideas I had. Ah! I very nearly catch Van der Brink and his lead group at this point, and I really wish I did, and I wish I didn't stop, because the outcome of this race would have been very different if I had kept pushing at this point, but I was becoming distracted by this rider, Brown, who was surfing my wheels. If he'd helped me at this point to push rather than just surf my wheels, then we could have both caught them, but instead he decided to sit just behind me and this royally pissed me off and distracted me from catching the leaders. I was getting really annoyed at this point and I wanted to rage quit. I've never rage quit a race before, but I have been dropped on the first lap and it really annoyed me that this guy was surfing my wheels. I'd burnt every match to try and catch them. All my tactics had gone out the window and this brown guy was just sitting behind me waiting for me to pull him to the front. This race had not gone to plan and I was just fed up. I haven't got any more. This guy behind me, he's just surfing my wheels. I can't. But I didn't want to quit. I then changed my focus away from catching the lead pack and making sure this brown rider didn't beat me. This was my number one priority now, to make sure that he didn't beat me. So I sat on his wheels for a few seconds to see how he likes it. If I wasn't so exhausted, the air would have been blue at this point. I was properly pissed off. And this was a first for me on Zwift. I had never been this, this annoyed before. And it was annoying me, the fact that I was so tired, I couldn't even swear. Then I decided to do to this guy what I had planned to do to the lead pack from the beginning and drop him on the Clyde kicker. I wanted to see how he liked it. <sighs> So goodbye wheel surfer, now I had to make it stick. No way I was gonna allow this guy to beat me and I certainly wasn't gonna allow him to catch me back up. I was so annoyed. So I kept pushing and pushing, charging into every single incline on the second and third lap, recovering on the descent without losing momentum and then charging into the next incline again. Slowly but surely, I dropped the silver surfer and found myself in no man's land in between the leaders and those trying really hard to catch me from behind. I completely skipped out that last lap. We're about to cross over into lap four. and I'm dying. I've managed to get a slight lead on the guy behind me. Oh, another ghost. 
and I am slowly catching the guy in front of me. I had then noticed that one of the riders in the lead pack wasn't able to maintain the pace set by Van der Brink and had to drop off. Because I've been able to leave the surfer in my wake, I now set my sights on this new straggler. I really wanted to catch him and secure third place as a consolation prize. I just want to use the ghost. Sneak up on him. Now having secured third, in my mind at least, I noticed something else. The guy in second place had also been dropped by Van der Brink. Van der Brink was having an absolute awesome race. I'm in third now. And this guy that had been dropped was now 11 seconds ahead of me. Normally I wouldn't think it possible, but my tactic of powering into these rollers had really worked for me. So I went for it. I just blew caution to the wind and thought, what the hell, what, what, what's to lose? Ah. Two laps left. Okay, we're about to catch the guy in front. I'd used everything I had to catch him on the Clyde Kicker. He was strong on downhill and on the flats. He had a good sprint, but not so good on the climbs. And we battled it out for the next lap and a half. It really does make a difference knowing that I was stronger on climbs than he was. Um, it was a unique feeling. Oh, thank God. Huang, if that's how you pronounce it, then used his ghost and popped back on screen only a few meters ahead of me but enough to give him the advantage going into the climb. I then had to use energy I didn't have on hindsight. He obviously knew I'd beat him on the climb kicker and he needed that head start. He used the ghost really well. He initially put nearly eight watts per kg into this climb just to get to the top with me. It felt good knowing that he couldn't drop me on this climb. <sighs> This was a great battle for second place with Huang. I loved every second of it. It's a shame he doesn't appear on Zwift Power. He wasn't wearing a heart rate monitor, so I don't know his stats versus mine, but it was a great battle. I knew he had the edge over me on the flat. I just didn't have the sprint. And when he dropped his ghost and I saw the close the gap sign appear, I knew he was gone and I was done. <sighs> He then popped back up five meters ahead of me, but it may as well have been five kilometers. I couldn't reach him in time. My legs were jelly and I was happy this race was over. I threw absolutely everything I had into it. Of course, I still try to sprint. Just because I can't sprint doesn't mean I won't try. And I crossed the line in third on Zwift. That was a good race. Oh my God. If I had a sprint, I tell you, if I had a sprint, I'll be dangerous. When I checked Zwift Power, I was in second, a podium position. Huang was removed and Van der Brink absolutely smashed the whole field. I still can't get my head around that. I was thrilled to have come second or third, depends how you look at it, in this race. But this race made my initial question even more relevant. How the hell am I going to win a race when I have to beat someone like Van der Brink? I'm going to use my December break to focus on a race win. Christmas is the period of miracles after all. If not, then a Zwift win will have to go down as a 2024 New Year's resolution and will be featuring in an upcoming video. So thanks for watching this video and see you in next week's one.